In this tutorial, we will take a look at the various ways in which you can adjust exposure and contrast in Capture One. In the first half of the tutorial, we will look at using simple but very powerful sliders, and then later on look at more in-depth controls like levels and curves. First of all, let's take a look at the Exposure tool. Exposure, much like adjusting it on your camera, will brighten or darken the whole range of tones in the photo. So for this photo, I'd probably set it around here. Contrast is a very common adjustment slider, and I'll get back to more advanced contrast controls later, and you'll learn why this slider does such a great job and with simplicity. Brightness controls the light of your photo a bit differently than exposure, in that it's focused more on adjusting the midtones. So it's great for bumping those up without affecting the brighter and darker areas of the photo. For saturation, let's take a look on this photo. You can already see it has some very saturated colours like the reds on the berries, and the saturation slider works intelligently by making sure colours don't burn out. This helps keeping natural, good looking colours on your photos, even if you boost the saturation a lot. So you can see on this photo, I can push it quite hard, but the red doesn't burn out. Let's have a look at the High Dynamic Range tool. This tool has two jobs, recovering details in highlights and shadows for more dynamic range, or amplifying them where more contrast is needed. The black and white sliders control the endpoints of the range, making it very easy to fine tune the contrast of your photo. Reducing the highlight slider brings back more detail in those areas, as you can see on this photo. And of course, I could also do the opposite if I wanted to. The shadow slider does the same, but in the darker tones. As I said earlier, the white and black sliders are really focused on the very darkest and brightest tones. The black slider is great for giving your photos a nice dark, rich black, but the great thing is you have to push it quite hard before it clips. Clipping means that you have lost all data at either end of the tonal range, so highlights will be blown and shadows will be total black. White works similarly to the highlights, but only in the brightest areas of the highlights. This makes it very useful for fine-tuning highlight adjustments. The last of the slider-based tools is Clarity. Again, this is another way of adjusting contrast, but it's focused to the mid-tones of the photo. This means you can push it to quite a high value without losing detail in the shadows and the highlights. So let's reset this adjustment and compare it to the contrast adjustment. So if I push this one quite hard, you can see at the upper end of the scale, my blacks really are too dark and it's starting to look unpleasant and I'm losing details in my highlights. So let's reset that. And again, go back to clarity and push that up. You can see the result is much more pleasing. Let's go back to the first photo and look at structure. Structure adds edge definition to areas of fine detail. It's great for landscapes, architectural details, animal fur and feathers, to name but a few. In the second half of this tutorial, we will look at the perhaps more unfamiliar tools of levels and curves. Levels shows you a histogram, and this is really a graphical representation of the tones in your photo, from shadows on the left to highlights on the right. In this photo, we can see it has a rather narrow tonal range, with not much at either end of the histogram, so no real dark or bright tones. So what does this mean for the photo? It can mean that the result is rather flat, meaning it's lacking contrast. Of course, this could be your intention, but if you do want a nice contrasty photo, then it's incredibly easy to fix in the Levels tool. Either click on the Auto icon, right here, and the highlight and shadow handles are quickly brought into the edges of the histogram, or you can adjust them manually. What is this doing exactly? You may have noticed the values at the top of the histogram. By bringing in the handles at the bottom, we are instructing Capture One to remap the histogram to those values. So to put it simply, imagine pinching either end of the histogram with your fingers and stretching it out to meet those two numbers at the top, 0 and 255. You can see the result of that in the output histogram tool up here. 
this is now given us the correct tonal range as you can see from the photo as well. If you don't want to stretch it that far, you can reduce the values at the top of the histogram. The middle handle controls the brightness of the midtones, much like the brightness slider. The curve tool also shows you a histogram overlay, and traditionally this has been the mainstay tool for adjusting contrast and brightness. The advantage of the curve tool is that it allows very precise control of contrast and brightness. It's used by first creating a point on the curve and changing its position. So if I pick a point here like this, and like in the levels tool, it's representing the darker area of the photo. Now if I want to make those areas brighter, I can move the point upwards or vice versa. Now for even more control, I can lock other points so I can really target the adjustments to just specific areas. Many control points can be added, like this for example, or even a single point just to brighten the midtones, like this. Each of the tabs in the curve tool work in a similar way. What's interesting is the difference between RGB curves and Luma curves. Adjusting a photo with an RGB curve will of course change contrast as you saw, but an additional and perhaps unwanted effect is that if you increase contrast, color saturation is also increased. Now with a Luma curve, contrast is the only thing that is modified. So let's make the same or a similar curve on the Luma tab. This time color is completely taken out of the adjustment. This is a highly effective tool if you have your color nailed, but just want to tweak contrast a little. However, we are used to higher contrast photos, perhaps having higher saturation. Think of a bright sunny day compared to a drab overcast day. Therefore, when you use a Luma curve for the first time, you might think the results are a little bit odd. But this takes us back full circle to the contrast slider. The contrast slider is actually a perfect blend of an RGB curve and a Luma curve. It gives you the ability to push it quite hard, but keeping the color nice and stable, but with a hint of saturation increase. I hope this tutorial has shown you that a lot of thought has gone into the adjustment tools of Capture One, and whatever you choose to use is designed with the best result in mind.